So Paul, we've come to Northern Ireland today. We're here near Newry. We were at the other end of the country there before Christmas. We were looking at a perma store. And I suppose to carry on from that series slightly, we want to just see some other solutions here in Northern Ireland around that whole slurry area because it's such a topical uh, subject now down south as well. So um, I suppose you mentioned about a bag slurry system and we've come to see an example here today near Newry. Um, you might introduce there maybe Trevor, Trevor Linton there from Linton and Robinson first before we explain the bag. Yeah, yeah. Here we're right, this Trevor Linton, the uh, Managing Director of Linton and Robinson from Straban. Um, we're the distributors of the bag throughout Ireland and the UK. So Trevor is going to first tell us a little bit about this farm and why this particular farm chose to use the bag. Um, yeah, this was uh, the particular site here was chosen. It's a block of uh, ground, uh, probably about three miles from the main farm unit. Uh, uh, and this is where a silage, uh, a lot of the silage comes from. It's a, generally a five cut system. So uh, it enables him to transport his, his slurry here in the winter months and have it readily available. Uh, and uh, an easy mixing system included in the bag for that purpose. So we'll be using uh, an umbilical system to spread. Very good. So Paul, back to the bag. Uh, what size is it and what capacity is it? So th this particular bag is 500 cubic metres or 110,000 gallons. It's a self-supporting enclosed bag. People will want to know how, how is the bag filled. Um, it's the tank obviously comes up here, yes. connects in here. So yeah, this, this is a six inch standard valve. This is the, the fill point for the, the bag and it's also the discharge, the MTN point for the bag. Okay, so it's common, the, the intake and the feeding it and taking it out, it's all always from the same Tr point? Through the same point, okay. yeah. 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 Now you can, you, you, because all these bags are bespoke size and shape, we can put fill points at other ends as well, whatever, whatever the customer wants. It can be done to the individual requirements. Okay, that's fine. So, this site here, he excavated the site a bit. It's not, it's not what most people would do or a lot of people would do. Would that be fair to say? A yeah. lot of them are put on flat sites without the bund around it. Yeah, th this was a sloping site. So we had to do, a, or the customer had to excavate to get down to level. So rather than having to shift all the soil off the farm or to a different location, he just used it as a bund. Okay. So there isn't a requirement to have a bund on these and the majority of these that you'll see installed around the continent aren't bunded. But it was just that the soil was surplus yeah. and it was as easy to bund it as okay. draw it away. Okay. That's fine. So this is the pipe. The slurry goes down. Can you show us where it goes from here? Yeah. <laughs> so Paul, the bag is made in France, is that right? Yeah, uh, it's made by Labarone, they're a French company. They're making these bags now in about 60 years. I suppose you could describe them as pioneers in the market. They were the first people to design and build these self-supporting bags. They make about 3,000 bags per year. Now, the majority of them are used for chemical storage, fertiliser, and they even have them using for storing nuclear waste in the Fukushima plant in Japan. So a small percentage go into agriculture use. Right. So, uh, so, so your slurry is coming in underneath here. It's, a, it's about two feet below the, the surface or the, yes. the flat surface. Yeah. And um, could you explain so this vent here or whatever we're looking at here? So well, the, the, this is just to get access to when you're installing the discharge station. Um, you can see this is, this, is, this is the top line of the tank and this is the, the bottom of the tank, so this is, so just when you're putting on the discharge station to get access. So this pipe goes down here, about two feet, turns it 90 degrees over along there, yeah. and out to the discharge station. So all your station. liquid is coming up through here, effectively? Y yes, yeah. yes. Okay. So th right. as the tank fills, this will rise. So when you're filling, the, when the bag is filling, how is the air getting released? Or you have these, these vents here along the top then, Okay. Are the, where, where would the air be released? Okay, is there any non-return valve in them? No. Okay, so it's key that the site is level so for that, that nothing is escaping. The site has to be level and firm. Yeah. You know, on this site now, it didn't take much um, filling because it was a good firm dry site. Okay. But uh, sometimes you might have to put in hardcore and then blind it with a bit of sand. Okay, that's fine. So 
in terms of the material that comes into then what slurry works and what slurry doesn't work going into the, it? The, the main thing it has to be under 6% dry matter. Dairy slurry will be fine, Wash, parlour washings will be fine, pig slurry. Need to be maybe a bit more careful if there's a straw on it or you yeah. know wouldn't be suitable. Or maybe beef slurry, you'd have to be more careful. Okay. It might, might not be suitable, but 6% is the, kind, is the figure that's generally used as the maximum. Okay. Um, so on agitation then, what, how do you actually agitate this if you need to? So the outlet, as we said, was a 6-inch pipe. So we have these agitating points here along the side. And they're 100 mils or 4 inch. And you can see we've got two at each side and two at each end. So you, you just connect on your pipe here through your, your slurry pump and, and it, wrote, it recirculates back in through another one. So you can okay. move it around to, to, as you're, when, you're, when you're agitating. Okay, fine. So, so Paul, we're looking at it here, it's, it's flat, it's, it hasn't been used yet. When it's full, what height is it? This will be one meter 50 or five feet. Right. That's the maximum height. Okay. And um, I suppose another thing maybe people ask, if you overfill it, what happens? Well, all what will happen is it'll start discharging up through the, the vents. Yes. And it'll be obvious that it's full. Yes. You, you won't burst it. Yes. And I suppose another question maybe people ask you, if say, these have a 20 year design life. What happens after the end of the 20 years? Can you come out someday and it's burst? Well, no, that's not the way they fail. What, what you'll find the way they'll fail is it'll start to seep through the, the, the joints and it, you get a good indication of this is coming towards the end of its life. So you don't get catastrophic failures. Okay. And is it UV light is its biggest um, enemy, so to speak? Oh yeah, it's got full UV protection. Yeah. And, and it's fair to say it can be fully recycled as well and when it comes to that time. Right, okay. So in terms of cost for people there, what, what's typically a cost of a system like this? The, I suppose the, first of all, the advantages, before, why you would consider this, and we'll go talk about the cost of it as well. Yeah. You can put, the, when you put this in, it's an enclosed bag, so you have, you're not collecting any rainwater. You never, you, because it's enclosed, you don't have to worry about ammonia emissions. So it's a complete job, it's a finished job. So for this one now, as we said, it's 110,000 gallons. It's about 22,000 euros. Are eighteen thousand pounds, but it's it's a finished job. Very little site work. There's no concrete requirement, no concrete base. Yeah. So for this scale, it is it's a it's a very economical solution. And this farm, if I'm right, it's a rented farm, so it's it, this can be taken away again. I yes. Yeah. 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 Now it's not an item you would move every year. Yeah. But it's still on a rented farm. It is you know as you can see, it wouldn't be that difficult to move it. Okay. Yeah. And say in terms of how this was delivered, this was delivered on one pallet, is that right? Yeah. Hold it up. Yeah, now with these as well, I suppose there is a 10 year warranty on these and it has a 20 year design life on the tanks. But it's very important that they're installed correctly, like anything. So, if, you know, there is a little bit of work in the installation of it. So it's about a ton weight when that's delivered. Those fittings have to be put on to the discharge station and it has to be lined up correctly. So I would encourage anyone that's thinking of buying one of these to allow us to do the installation. Then there is no issue afterwards over warranty. Mm. Because sometimes if you buy it and you install it yourself, that can be a, a get out clause for the manufacturer that it wasn't installed correctly. Okay. So I would encourage people, you know, there is a little bit of a, a, a knack and there's a, you know, there's a skill in installing the, these right. So I would encourage people that are, if you're buying this, just let us do the installation as well. Okay. But we can supply only if, if, if people want. Okay, the price mentioned, was that supply only? It wouldn't be, the, the, the installation cost isn't very big anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's and their approximate prices. <coughs> and you know the way things have gone this year, by tomorrow, that price could have, <laughs> it can change so much at the moment. Fair enough. And say Trevor, who's, who's inquiring for systems like this in Northern Ireland or who's typically ringing about a system like this? Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, um, well, First of all, there's the AD industry, you know, they've got lots of digestate to get out there. There's lots of farmers now looking for digestate, so, so it's a quick fix. Uh, I mean, this year was done in one day, I believe, the installation, or thereabouts. Uh, pig slurry uh, is another example, again, getting it close to where it's, where it's required. And um, uh, also dairy slurry, of course. Uh, yeah, that'll be the main. Okay. Uh, Customers for us. Okay, and down south then, Paul, who's who's inquiring or have you 
Any sales agreed? The, 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 the inquiries at the moment is we seem to have a big problem that there isn't enough capacity on most farms. And um, most farms, they don't need to go for huge, um, I suppose, they don't need to be increased hugely. So 100, 200,000 gallons seems to be enough to get a lot of farms out. So for that scale, this is a very practical solution. Yeah. You know, maybe if, we're, if you were talking about half a million gallons, we might look at some of the other alternatives. But I think 100, 200,000, this is a good solution. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just to get that guy compliant, that's yes. slightly offside or whatever. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Like it's very suitable for parlour runoff, parlour washings. Um, so that would be generally the, 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 the where I would think that this is the category that would this will suit. Okay, very good.